How about that new breakfast place, bud? Breakfast is good. Gotta like that. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, back in the Kung Fu closet? Yes, sir. In the dungeon for some Kung Fu conversation. So, uh, should we, should we do, uh, should we drop our show about what we're doing as far as, uh, you guys gonna give us a Gmail account? So, yeah, uh, at Gmail, we are a Kung Fu Conversations podcast. If you feel like emailing us, or you can get a hold of us through Instagram, Instagram. at KF Conversations, KF Conversations, and you can send me a message through there. We are also on Facebook at Kung Fu Conversations. You can find me there and send me a message. We have our YouTube channel. Yep. We have our Teespring account, mm-hmm. Kung Fu Conversations, and you can find a great link through Instagram. You'll see me doing some Wing Chun stuff, being an idiot, and you can find the link there and support us that way. We also have a Buy Me a Coffee account, Kung Fu Con Pod, Kung Fu Con Pod, and uh, we'd love your support. We've got some great guests coming on. We're always updating our software and hardware. Really excited. And we also teach. Owen, what's your school? And uh, Boulder Internal Martial Arts, just we, here in Boulder, Colorado. Awesome blog spot. We can follow yep. Owen at. He also has a good face uh, Instagram account and Facebook. And uh, what are you teaching, my friend? Baguen Shingi, Chinese Internal Martial Arts. Fantastic. And I'm Randall Davis of Red Force Chinese Boxing. Also, I have an Instagram and a Facebook account. And I am here in Longmont showing some Wing Chun. And we're going to start at least uh, monthly classes coming up in May. And those will go for pretty long, and I'll give you enough information that you can go home and practice until the next time I see you. And I'm also teaching down at 5280 or Shaolin, or also known as Denver Shaolin and Tai Chi. I'm going to do – I've been asked to update my once-a-year intro to Wing Chun to twice a year. So we're going to do that hopefully coming up in July here pretty soon, and I hope to see you there. I'm also donating half the profits of those seminars that I do at 5280 Shaolin to the school so they can help – put some money towards the Denver Chinese uh, classic, which is their tournament that they hold once a year in September. Nice. And uh, it is well worth it. And even if you do another style of Wing Chun, come on in, see how we do it different. It's always fun to talk to other Chunners as well as if you don't do Wing Chun, come on in. Even if you're a rookie, it'll be a blast. Mm-hmm. So what are we talking about today? My friend, Oh man, we're going to, this is going to be a good one. Bag of worms. So yeah, bag, bag of worms, yeah, bag of worms. Or maybe it is it a whole bag or is it just a can? I think this one might be a can and a bag. It could be a can and a half or like a tin can, like oh. an industrial restaurant service size. Absolutely. Yeah. So we're going to talk about classical applications versus modern applications. And really, I think the idea behind this topic is around the the you see a lot of you see a lot of martial arts demos, especially in Chinese martial arts, where they're like, okay, so somebody's going to throw a punch at me, and then I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. And, you know, I think that, you know, that may have worked back in the 70s. It may have worked back in the 80s when it was, you know, people didn't have as much access to information. But now, you know, we can get online and we can look at millions, literally millions and millions of fights, all different kinds of fights, like like in the ring, people on the sidewalk and all sorts of things. And you start sort of seeing these kind of classical applications. Okay, this person's going to do this and then I'm going to do three different kung fu techniques and this is how it's going to – this is how this move works. And it's like – Really? Is it though? Really? It doesn't, it doesn't kind of seem like it would work or better yet. Sometimes in my experience, when I've seen these things, it's like, it looks like it might work for your instructor who's been doing it for 50 years. Sure. And they have the distance and they have the timing and they have the fighting background. Sure. And that may, in, in that case, you're like, okay, you could do it, but maybe I don't know if your students could do it. Absolutely. I don't know if I could do it. You know, there's, so there's a lot of factors in there. Is it going to take me 20 years as a student to pull off that one thing? And it, will I be able to grasp it under live fire? Because when pressure is on, that changes the whole dynamic. It really does. Yep. So some of it can be used in the teaching. You know, some of that can be at fault for something failing like that. Some of that can be the understanding mm-hmm. of how the movement relates back to the system and that is that can be on the instructor's fault that can be on his instructor's fault yep. that can be on the lineage it can be For on sure. the system mm-hmm. you know how much of it is kept in secret how much of it gets lost in translation if people change the system do, do things get lost mm-hmm. because if you change certain things well a lot of people don't realize that that also changes the tactic and then the relationship behind the movement and the understanding of it um, one thing that I see a lot here in the West, and it's funny too, because 
our next uh, interview that we're going to drop here at the end of the month uh, coming up here soon, it's going to cover this. And I'm actually going to talk about the other style of Tai Chi that I see it in. I know a lot of people that will do the Yong system that don't have a martial background. Mm. And what will happen is they'll get together with their buddies. Oh, Joe does karate and Bob does, you know, BJJ. And then Toby does uh, a keto. And those guys will be like, you know, this movement kind of looks like this. Right. And so they'll add it in there, but does it have the power of Tai Chi behind it? Mm -hmm. Does it have the understanding of the framework, the rotation of the waist, right. how to disperse force? So is it a empty, hollow shell of an application if it doesn't have the engine and the dynamics of what make up that Yong style application? Mm -hmm. For sure. And, and I understand it's okay. I love cross training. I do it myself. And I do it with even more than just Chinese martial arts. And, you know, but I am at the point now after 25 years of training where application is maybe my last thing as far as how I'm judging is a system effective. And I know that sounds so backwards, mm. but I, I'm looking at how does it produce power? How does the stance produce the power? How does the structure, the posture produce the power? Is the power only, you know, uh, coming out of one part of the body? How does, is it, is it consistent? Mm, is the power yeah. source consistent? So there are so many other things that are you working on that? Um, you know, flushing that out and then going to the tactic or are you starting tactic and working backwards to power? Yeah. And I think that's a, that's, a, this is such an important point. And, you know, if you even take it a step further where people have actually – have lost the martial applications for their art. And I'm thinking specifically of more of like the, the, the Wu-Tang guys, right? And they – so instead of – you know, they'll, they'll do whatever version of Taiji that they have or whatever version of Bagua. And then, you know, you see them apply it and it's like, oh, that looks like Sanda. Mm-hmm. So it's just like, oh, we've just sort of, we didn't, we don't know anymore. So we just grafted this modern application, this from this modern, more modern system onto this other martial art. Sure. And I think that goes back to what you were saying about like power generation in the frame. And so, and you know, I don't think that, I think that in a way, you know, Chinese martial arts kind of comes up a little bit short from time to time in, um, you know, grappling or like ground fighting, you know, mm -hmm. there's not a lot of ground fighting in Chinese martial arts sure. for various reasons. And, uh, you know, I think in, uh, for a modern martial art practitioner, I think that that's a hole in your game. Very much so. And, you know, when you start taking, like you have somebody, I've seen various videos of people like, Oh, well, you know, Chinese martial arts has a ground fighting game and it's just, you just take these stand up techniques and then you put them on the ground and you do it like this. And I'm like, uh, uh, I've seen that in Wing Chun so much. It's so silly. It's just like, why there's already like whole, there's a whole, there's hundreds of schools out there of wrestling and ground fighting and that do it very well. And they specialize in it. Yep. They yep. specialize in They're it. They're very good at it. So, you know, it sort of makes me want to take a step back and say, okay, well, you know, if I'm a Shingy practitioner and how does, how does my art, my art may not, A, may not have an answer for everything in terms of application. You got to really look in the mirror on that one. Absolutely. You got to be honest about it. And then two, am I doing the actual art or am I just sort of miming the, the motions and gluing some other application or engine on top of it? And, you know, it's, it's a difficult, it's difficult to discern, especially if you're, maybe your teacher, just like we started out this, this podcast with me, your teacher didn't know. Maybe your teacher's teacher didn't know. But the thing is, is like, I think that the systems and the techniques are so inherently good that you can get away with not having the correct power generation and you can get away with not having the correct body method and you can get away with a lot of that shit and your art will still work. Like um, Shingy or, or Bagua to maybe to a lesser extent. I think Wing Chun's more. great at it. Right. You don't sure. have – I mean there are people that don't know half of the principles of the movement behind it. But because it works on triangles mm. and wedges mm -hmm. and basic, you know, the simple machines as they're called, lever, pulley, mm -hmm. corkscrew, all these different things, you don't even have to know that stuff. The problem that comes with that is it's not very deep. 
way. It, there's yeah. there's no depth to it. And and so when I go into a school that might do another system of Wing Chun, which you know I'm definitely not saying that ours is the best or anything like that. But when I ask them how many different ways can you use a hand, they're like, well, we got a drill and then we got an entry. I'm like, what about after contact? What about in Chi Sao? You know, have you used it on the line? Have you used it off the line? I actually used an, an old technique, uh, not old technique. Why am I saying that? Anyway, uh, I was, I was uh, demoing at a school that had a Wing Chun in mm. it and I was using Jum Sao off the line. And they're like, wait, you use stuff off the line? I'm like, yeah. What about your sub centers? They're like, what's that? I'm like, well, yeah. and so I have to go into, I'm like, well, here's this, this, and this. And I'm like, how do you do it in the form? How do you do it in the first form? We've got a whole section of paired hand movements that are off the line. If anybody does the paired hand movements in their sec, you know, in their, in their Sunim Tau, if you look at it, none of that's on the line. Mm. And so it's like, oh, well, it showed this way because of this, this, and this, and this. I'm like, no, there's a reason that it's shown off the line. I know why. I'm not going to tell you, you know, I, I can give you five reasons why it's shown off the line mm -hmm. and how not only does it integrate with that form, mm -hmm. but the other two mm. as well as the wooden man. And so unless you have that understanding of the depth, you're only going to get surface level Wing Chun, meaning that you might only have one hand that you can use one way. Sure. Or you might only ha relate it to a drill. And that's another big thing too. And, I, and I, I'm – really, really harping on this is I think there's a huge gap in taking drills and transposing them over to live fire. Mm. Mm -hmm. That is, I think that's a huge gap in a lot of people's game. Sure. Okay. I can, I can boil this down to a, a drill, whether it be point sparring drill, whether it be entry drill, whether it be a reversal drill, you know, et cetera, et cetera. The list goes on of, what can you work on in a drill? Balance, coordination, speed, distance, timing, mm -hmm. all these other things. But how does that transfer over to a sticking hand game? Sure. How does that translate over to an entry? How does that translate over to live fire? Mm -hmm. And so all these things, I think, have to be incorporated. And if they're not, there are semi-truck wide holes and, and and forget the name of the system. Forget what country it comes from. Mm. You know, these holes can be huge in any system, whether it's from Taekwondo to C lot. They, they should be questions that are be a asked by the students. But better yet, does teacher know? And is he asking, she asking themselves mm -hmm. in their own teaching methodologies? Sure. Yeah. And I, I think that those are those are those are fantastic points. And I think that they're so important in trying to discern you know, how these uh, arts are applied. And and I think, you know, it's like in Chinese martial arts, it's like, oh, well, you know, that person may not be the best fighter, but they have really good gong fu. And there's a, sure. there's a distinction. Made Absolutely. There. Absolutely. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, no, that guy's meaning that, that their, their method of of training whatever art that they're doing is really good. It's very superior. They have good gong fu. Now, they may not have good fighting. You know, or they may have, you know, I, I always think that there's kind of a, a, it's always a give and take. You know, if you look at all the different areas you have to train in, in Chinese martial arts. And how much like, time okay, do you have to? Yeah, well, yeah. Like, <laughs> first, like, yeah, right? for sure. And like, how early did you start training? You know, sure. cause you've got people who were in these systems when they were like 10 and they've trained consistently every day for the last 40 years. And they got, you know, they were diligent and they got a good teacher and they were a good student and they had a good method and they've investigated different, you know, arts and they've, they've tried it out. And, you know, those people are really the people, you know, like people in the inner circles of these martial arts look at and they go, yeah, that guy really has, he has very good Kung Fu, you know, or it's like, well, yeah, his Kung Fu may not be so good, but he's a really good fighter. Sure. Because <laughs> those are, those are not necessarily, uh, they, they're, they're not necessarily the same thing. Or serendipitous. No. Yeah, I think that's a very good point. Um, I have a friend that's about 20 years in, and his first art at 10 years old was wushu. Mm -hmm. Super good at it still. Mid-30s still, I'm like, you're like a, you're like a ballerina. Mm. You know, it's insane. But recently in the last decade, got into stuff like shuai jiao and um, a little bit of a tam tui. Mm -hmm. And, oh God, what is that other art that he does? I can't think of it. It's pretty valid. I got so many friends that do so many things. What a good thing to have. A lot of good friends that do Kung Fu. Yeah, absolutely. Um, 
but he, but he was asking me, he's like, you seem so good at the combat side of things. He's like, why is that? And I'm like, well, it was my teacher and it was mm-hmm. the system. You started a decade into something that was performance, mm-hmm. which there's nothing wrong with that. Mm-hmm. But while the last decade you've been learning these three new arts, you know, your mindset might be plugged into your old wushu sure. mindset, which is for, for performance, for speed, for flash and for flair. Day one into Wing Chun, when I walked into it, it was battle tactic mm-hmm. or how do I apply it? And so that creates a different mindset. Yeah, it really does. And it, it creates a different relationship with the movements and the forms and the understanding of it. Mm-hmm. And I think that comes to it too. So that's why I wonder, you know, with my buddies that the, the two or three folks that I know that do the young system that, that supplement in, I'm not saying that it's wrong, but my question is, is that a young style application that you're doing from karate? Mm-hmm. Sure. And you know, the thing is, is like you, you can, if you just take some of the superficial movements, say in like a young style Taiji and you look at them, you can see, you can, you know, you're like, oh, this looks like a block punch and this looks like a, you know, oh yeah, I'm going to move this technique out of the way and I'm going to hit and I'm going to do, you know, so, and those are not wrong. Sure. But that's just, that's the surface. Absolutely. And every one of those, I guarantee you, every single one of those applications has, those techniques has five applications. Exactly. Seven applications, exactly. 10 applications. There's going to be chin applications. There's going to be throwing applications. There's going to be hitting Arm applications. Breaks, yeah. yeah well, exactly. Sweeps. Yeah. So, and and even aside from that, like if you if you can tease out some of those applications in say a young style Taiji, you know, you're doing like a brush knee press kind of a thing. And you can say, Oh, well, I can I could figure out five ways to use that technique. I could use it on the outside, I could use it on the inside, so on and so forth. Are you using the correct power? Mm-hmm. Are you generating mm-hmm. the power? That is inherent in young style Taiji and in good young style Taiji practitioners is that is, are you doing the thing? And maybe you are, maybe you're not, I don't know, you know, but that's something that I think is absolutely critical that you have to ask yourself. And then, you know, if there's holes, like you were saying, if there's holes or gaps in that young style Taiji game, it's like, oh, well, do you know, do you do, do you just like go study boxing and then, and then try to fill it in and then pretend like that's your young style Taiji. I say, no, man, that's bullshit. Just say, yeah, you know what? I thought that, that maybe my, my, uh, you know, my game in terms of my Dafa, my hitting methods and in, in my young style Taiji wasn't very good. I studied some boxing and, you know, maybe when I fight, that's what comes out. Cause who cares? Right. Cause it's fighting. Fighting is fighting. Mm-hmm. It's not. It's not like, oh, I have to use my young style Tai Chi when I fight or I have to use my boxing when I fight. It's like, fuck that. Your fighting's your fighting. But when you're talking about your art, when you're practicing your art, you know, you want to under- understand. Ooh, the, I like I like that. You want to understand the, the fighting versus the art. Yeah. You want to understand the the influence of, you know, if you spend a couple of years doing boxing and you do a tai, and then you were doing Tai Chi before. What is the influence that you're having on that? And can you can you keep them straight? Can you in your body? If you're teaching somebody, which is even more important, can you say, yeah, you know what? I do this technique. It's a little bit more like boxing. This is more of a boxing style approach. And maybe you're not even doing boxing, but maybe the way that you're entering is more of a boxing style, right? It's maybe mm. there's less sticking sticking, or you know, whatever it is. And I think that it's so important. And I think the thing that just gets so lost in the mix these days is people are just jumbling all this stuff together in a giant pile. And then they're saying, oh, it's, it's, you know, whatever. It's Taiji. It's Bagua. It's Wing Chun. It's, you know, and it, and it's not. It's like, no, Wing Chun was like a, it's a, it's a thing. It's its own thing. And yeah, there's probably gaps in the style, just like there's gaps in Shingi, Huge. just like there's gaps in Bagua. Huge. Yeah. And so I think it's, if you want to, if you're interested in the fighting part, it's important to try to look at the gaps and be honest with yourself and then go fill those in. Uh-huh. Maybe it's your ground game. You know, I think that's important. But if it's not, you know, it, it, you know, don't try to say that like, you know, your shingy has a ground game because it doesn't. Just because it looks like a Mercedes on the outside, does that mean it's a Mercedes on the inside? Or did somebody take a Mercedes body and stick it on a Nissan Altima? <laughs> That's exactly right.